Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. In today's video, we will identify and explain the five factors that affect carrying capacity. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can identify and explain the five factors that affect carrying capacity. When you think about the term carrying capacity, I want you to ask yourself, how many people could comfortably live in your home with the resources you have available? Resources include food, water, available space, clothing, and a couple of other factors. I know in our home, we could accommodate approximately eight people and still have enough resources available to sustain everyone for about a month. Maybe one or two more people, but that would be pushing it. So in a nutshell, carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals of a particular species that a specific environment can support. Once a population reaches its carrying capacity in an environment, a variety of factors work to stabilize or balance out that population. These factors are called limiting factors and they control the growth of a population. The five factors that limit population size are competition, predation, parasitism and disease, unusual weather and natural disasters, and invasive species. Now before we begin, let's take a look at a graphical example of carrying capacity. On this graph, we are looking at the fluctuation or changes in a population over time and its carrying capacity. Take a look at the red line. From 1800 to around 1850, the population continues to rise until it overshoots around 1.8 million and then it drops down to around 1.4 million. The population continues to go up and down from year to year. Now let's take a look at the blue line. The blue line represents the average amount of organisms of a certain species that an ecosystem can sustain and keep alive with the amount of resources that are available in that area. The carrying capacity for this population of organisms would be approximately 1.5 to 1.6 million. Remember, limiting factors affect the carrying capacity of an area and we will start off first with competition. Number one, competition. When populations of organisms become overcrowded, individuals in the population will compete with each other for food, space, water, sunlight, and any other essentials to keep them alive. Some individuals acquire enough resources to survive and reproduce. Some individuals may get just enough resources for them to survive, but not enough for them to support and take care of offspring. While some organisms may not get enough resources and they starve to death or die from lack of essential resources to keep them alive. Competition is a density dependent limiting factor. This means that the more individuals that live in a certain area, the faster they use up the available resources in that area. Think about when COVID-19 started spreading in the United States. People were competing for food, water, and sadly enough, toilet tissue. Some people literally did not have enough toilet tissue at home because there were so many people that were competing for this resource in certain stores such as Walmart, Kroger, Family Dollar, Dollar General, and pretty much anywhere people could get their hands on toilet tissue. Many animals compete for territories where they can breed and raise offspring. These areas are often located close to food and water to keep them alive. Animals who do not find and establish a territory often do not find mates and therefore cannot breed and have offspring. Also, think about what happens when organisms from two different species compete for the same resource. This type of competition is a major factor for evolutionary change. Oftentimes, one species survives, thrives, and keeps their population alive while the other species dies and their population becomes extinct. That truly is survival of the fittest. Number two, predation. Predator-prey relationships are very important in ecosystems, especially when we talk about herbivore versus predator relationships. Think about this. Herbivores feed on producers who provide the herbivores with energy. If there are too many herbivores, then they will overeat the grass and other producers until there is nothing left. The herbivore population will soon decrease and this will cause a negative effect on every other organism in the ecosystem and cause their populations to decline and lead to possible extinction. Predators help control prey or herbivore populations by eating them to get energy. If predators weren't around to keep herbivore populations in check, herbivore or primary producers populations would grow out of control and overeat on plants and other primary producers which would destroy entire food webs and ecosystems. Remember, primary producers are the start of any food chain or food web, and without them, everything else would die. So predators are a very possible limiting factor to keep prey populations at a certain capacity. Take a look at the following predator-prey graph. 
Notice that as the rapid population decreases, the wolf population decreases, and as the rabbit population increases, so does the wolf population. This is because predators and prey have a direct relationship. As one increases, the other increases and vice versa. Predation of herbivores or primary consumers is a very important limiting factor that helps sustain life on Earth by preserving the amount of available primary producers that have many organisms depend on them for their survival. Number 3. Parasitism and Disease Parasites and disease-causing organisms feed on their hosts, which oftentimes weakens them, causes disease, and leads to death in some cases. Parasitism and disease are density-dependent factors because the closer organisms are together, the faster parasites and disease can spread from one host organism to the next. Suppose a disease was to spread in a wolf population. Wolves are important for controlling and keeping prey populations at a certain level. If the prey feed on grass and the wolves are no longer around, the prey population would grow out of control and will overeat grass and other producer populations which would lead to larger and even greater consequences. Think about this, what would other populations feed on if there is no grass? Parasitism and disease are definitely limiting factors that also control the population of species in an ecosystem. Number 4. Unusual weather and natural disasters. This can be hurricanes, droughts, floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, wildfires, and other events. We combine these two together because both are density and dependent limiting factors. This means they can have an impact on species or organisms regardless of how dense their population is in one area. These limiting factor events can impact large areas and have devastating effects on several species of an organism in an area. A heavy rainstorm can wash away vital food resources and shelter that organisms depend on to survive. A stream drought can kill large numbers of fish in a river or stream due to lack of water and oxygen supplies. Number 5. Invasive Species Invasive species can be huge limiting factors of organisms that are native to a certain environment. Invasive species are organisms that have been introduced into a new area and often destroy the economy, environment, and decrease the population of native species. Some examples of invasive species are Burmese pythons, kudzu, Asian carpfish, brown tree snakes, and water hyacinths. Invasive species outcompete the native species of an area for food, space, and other resources that they need to survive. As a result, the native species population significantly decreases since they are not able to compete at a greater rate for resources they need to survive. And that's our video for today. Now let's just know to see how proficient you are when identifying and explaining the five factors that affect carrying capacity in an ecosystem by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% are higher for proficiency, record your associate proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive, productive day.